I'm Stephanie Yee from Math with Miss Yee, and today I'm going to show you how I use GimKit assignments in my class. I've been using GimKit to practice skills after teaching a lesson with students, and I really appreciate how powerful their reports are in giving me feedback on how my students are doing. So let's get started. We're going to start off by going to GimKit.com. I'm clicking GimKit Live, and it starts in kits. Kits are where you have all of your custom activities that you build. I have some custom activities I've already built and today I'm going to assign integer operations to my students. I've created classes for all of the periods that I teach and I'm signing it to the two sixth grade classes I have that are currently doing integer operations. I'm choosing a due date and the target cash amount is the goal amount you want students to reach at the end of the assignment. I've set it to a thousand. I feel like that has been pretty reasonable and you can kind of play around with it as students are working um, and throughout the year. I'm giving them a 60 minute time limit and they start off with $50 so that way they can right away buy a few power ups to start um, and then I'll just create the assignment. Once I create the assignment, I will see that it's assigned to my two periods. Each of them have its own unique copy link. And that's what I'm going to share directly to my students, either on my Canvas, Google Classroom, or straight into the Zoom chat, depending on how you plan on sharing it. So let's look at it on the student's end. So if I were a student in my period three class, I'd copy that link. I would start off by logging in with Google and GimKit automatically takes their first name and last initial, and the questions start to come up. This is super helpful because of how GimKit has already named students, um, so that way you're not coming up with names that are like uh, at sign, I Andy, and all these funky names that students might have um, when trying to type their name out on a computer. Um, as you can see, when you are playing the game at the top, right there's that money symbol that's how much money students have um, and as you're continuing through the game you earn money for every question you get correct they also give streak bonuses which encourage continuous correct answers um, and that is a goal in math right that students are able to do this with a high accuracy rate um, as you continue, students can also purchase power-ups, and I usually explain to students that if you press the money symbol, you can toggle between your questions and the shop. Um, and I allow students to purchase those power-ups. I think it's a good way to encourage their like um, gain in money, and they also, the more they spend, the more that they'll also be able to answer as well. And so. I think that's a really cool way for us to be able to practice their skills um, and also for them to have some autonomy over their practice as well. I would say my students generally like um, the activity. There's a lot of sounds, there's a lot of colors, there's, it's like pretty quick um, and the streaks definitely help with that motivation as well. Um, the thousand dollar limit I, when I did this activity, it took me a few minutes to get through, but for most of my students, I would say it takes them maybe 10 through 15 minutes, depending on how strong they are in their skills. So if they're really, really good with the topics that they're being assigned, I think 10 minutes is enough time for them to finish. Um, but I do have students who are taking like 20 or 30 minutes to complete it. At this point in my game, you'll notice that I'm getting really close to that $1,000 goal and now I've completed. So on the student's end, they're able to see how many they got correct, incorrect, and then it gives them a whole summary of their scores um, and their correct, incorrect answers at the really end. If you scroll to the top, they also have a space where they can give themselves applauses um, and it goes up to like an unlimited amount, I believe. It's just like a fun way for students to celebrate themselves. Um, on the teacher end, so you get this whole report of how students did and there's a lot of information that you can see. So let me show you where you can find this. We're going back into GimKit.com. You'll click on Assignments and under Assignments, you'll click on the assignment that you've given students. So I'm looking at these two classes that I've assigned it to and I'm clicking into the individual class category. So the assignment I completed was under my period three and I am listed with my percentage, my complete 
uh, correct answers and incorrect answers as well. So I can see really clearly that when I did, I got 97%. Um, and there's a lot of other information that I can see as well. In the view report, it'll give you the report of all of your classes. So if you assign it to two, three classes, all of that information will show up. Um, and you can also see under the individual class sections who's completed the assignment, who's still working on it, and who still needs to complete it. And so this is a really good way in class if you're doing this on Zoom or in Google Hangouts to check in with students who you see are not in it yet. And so you're able, to, you're not like kind of blind in what students are doing. You do have a sense of where they are. You can't see the questions they're working on, but you are able to see their completion rate. This is the report side. So on the report side, I'm able to see how students did on individual questions in our practice sets. And then this way I can pinpoint which questions we struggled on and then go over it as a whole class. Um, there's a lot of information here and you also have a printout available as well. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I've used GimKit for a little bit now, maybe a month or so, but I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I think the assignments piece has been super helpful for me to just get some quick practice with my students in class. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.